A New York City landlord has finally been able to evict a tenant who hasn't paid rent in over three years and finally gotten her apartment back. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing and Landlord News. All right, so I have some good news coming out of New York City for once, okay? And this story, you know, it, it put a smile on my face because it is one of those things that, hey, finally, finally, this landlord is able to get their apartment back and get rid of this squatting tenant who hasn't paid rent since June of 2019. I mean, it's a crazy story. And, you know, I absolutely hate hearing stories like this, but the whole issue was actually exacerbated by the whole pandemic eviction moratoriums and the fact that, hey, this landlord couldn't even evict this tenant for almost two years and then still had to go through the entire eviction process. So yeah, it became a nightmare. They finally got this tenant out of there. And now, you know, it, it, it looks really good that they'll be able to finally go on and move on with their life, okay? So yeah, this, this is a good news story for once, okay? Bad news, the landlord still ended up losing tens of thousands of dollars. I mean, I, I'll admit that's bad, but at least they got their apartment back, okay? So before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like and subscribe button. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think, okay? If you're a landlord and you have a tenant who owes you, let's say $75,000, right? Because this tenant didn't pay rent for over three years, right? Would you try to sue that land or that tenant to try to get recover that lost rent? Or, you know, do you even think it's worth your time? That's that's the question I have for the other landlords on here watching today. You know, I, I honestly probably would sue the tenant for um, at least some of that money because, you know, my intention would be to get the tenant's wages garnished, to, you know, seize their bank accounts, to destroy their credit because they screwed you over so bad. Now it's time for a little revenge on your part, okay? Get them and knock them out, okay? <laughs> Huh, anyway, uh, let's get into this article. It's coming from the New York Post and it says, West Village grifter Kate Gladstone finally locked out of her apartment after eviction. And they actually have a video and I'm going to be showing a little bit of that video right now. Yeah, that's some interesting stuff right there, okay? So there she is, she's trying to hide her face. I mean, come on, you should be ashamed of this stuff you're doing, okay? You essentially stole from this landlord for three years straight, and now you're like, oh, I don't want people to see who I am. Well, you're a piece of garbage, okay? You should be, you know, they should plaster your face all over the city to make sure no other landlord ever rents to you. Okay, and I hope that you have the hardest time possible ever finding more accommodations. Just go down to the homeless shelter because that should be the only place that should house you right now. Oh man, ridiculous. But anyway, let's get into this article. The West Village grifter who spent three years living rent-free in one of New York's toniest neighborhoods got officially locked out on Monday. A Manhattan housing court judge ruled against Kate Gladstone's effort to get back into Barrow Street abode where she had been crashing from June 2019 until her eviction last week. I'm not going to provide access if your items are no longer there, Judge Evan S. Forrest told Gladstone, who appeared at the hearing virtually. Ms. Gladstone, you have to go to a shelter if you have nowhere else to go, as Forrest said. Yep, and I am so glad. Okay, I am so glad that, you know, this judge is finally cracking down on this person who is, you know, obviously a well-known squatter 
Okay, obviously abusing the system and had no intention of playing by the rules, paying the money back that they owed, and just was being protected by the ridiculous laws that the city had in place, okay? This is the reason why I don't believe in so many tenant protections because you end up with people like this who know how to abuse the system and they absolutely destroy the landlords who get caught up in their web of lies and deceit. Okay, so yeah, don't let her back up in there and tell her to get her butt down to the homeless shelter. <laughs> Gladstone, 46, who also goes by the name Catherine Klein, claimed to the judge that this all happened so quickly. We have zero access to the apartment, she said. But Gladstone's ouster is the culmination of years of eviction effort on the part of Valentina Bahada and Heidi Russell, who have owned the two-bedroom pad in the waterfront co-op since 2016. The saga began in June 2019 when Gladstone moved in with her child, paying $2,000 for one of the rooms in the pad on a month-to-month -month basis, according to court documents. Soon afterward, Russell asked Gladstone to move out, saying her mother needed to stay with her to, cover, uh, to recover from an upcoming surgery. Gladstone refused, the landlord said, and stopped paying rent. Yeah, and see, that that's the problem right there. Month to month up in New York doesn't, you know, I mean, they, they were probably going to have trouble evicting her even before the pandemic started. But anyway, let me continue. Russell and Bahada took her to court in December 2019 and secured an agreement for the unwanted tenant to leave the following March. But by the time Gladstone's supposed departure date rolled around, the COVID-19 eviction moratorium was in place. In August 2020, a desperate Russell, who said she spent days wandering the streets with her poodle to avoid Gladstone, sued in a bid to get her out, prompting a front page in the post. Russell said her unwanted roommate sprayed chemicals, recorded her, and blasted music. In July 2021, the court signed off on a warrant to evict Gladstone pending a status conference, but Gladstone claimed financial hardship, which paused the case. In March, two years after she'd initially agreed to leave, Gladstone filed a state emergency re rental assistance program application, which again halted the eviction. See, they, they put those rules in place. They say, oh, well, if you apply for a rental assistance, then that will halt your eviction. You, you see what the problem is, right? She didn't even qualify for the rental assistance, but she was applying for it anyway because she knew that would stop her from getting evicted. Basically, drawing out the process, and that's why this whole thing took three years instead of her being out back in March of 2020. So yeah, that's why I don't believe in these sort of eviction moratoriums, okay? I don't believe in all of these tenant protections that keep people from being evicted. If the landlord just says, hey, I don't want to renew your lease, you know, after year one, you know, you had a one year lease, well, they should have the right to do that. In her case, she had a month to month lease. So the landlord should have the right to say, hey, I am not going to allow you to stay here any longer. I only had you in here for a few months until I needed to use the space again. And you know what? You have to go. But these tenants, you know what they do is they play the game. They've played the game before and they will stay as long as possible. And then she'll sit here, oh, this happened all of a sudden. No, it didn't happen all of a sudden. This has been three years in the making, three years of you not paying rent. And it is a ridiculous joke. So I wish I, I could find a picture in this article that had this lady's face in it, right? But um, I just don't see one. She's so ashamed of her, you know, criminality and um, the garbage that she put this landlord through that she's hiding her face. What a joke, okay? I hope that, you know, her family sees her on here and shames her even more because, you know, she looks like a complete piece of garbage at this point. On August 5th, in the absence of a COVID moratorium and with Gladstone's ERAP bid denied, Asphorus ordered the eviction, which took place Thursday. Gladstone was back in court Monday claiming she needed access to, uh, to access the apartment to reclaim personal property. Bahada has a history of locking us out before. She has a history of taking my things, she argued. There is nothing holding them accountable for not following procedure or not following the law. They're getting bolder and bolder. 
An attorney for the landlords, Arthur Schwartz, said that Gladstone still had a key to the front gate of the property. She spent a lot of the weekend banging on the door of the apartment demanding to be let in, he said. As Forrest denied Gladstone's multiple requests to be let back into the apartment, he noted that her property had been moved from the home and into a storage unit in the Bronx and ordered her to retrieve it from there. And that, that was a smart thing, okay? And, you know, that's why I say, you know, if you follow the law, get all that property of hers removed, you put it into storage, they have no reason to come back into your place, okay? None whatsoever. And hopefully if they even try, they can be charged with trespassing. So, yeah, this bad situation for the landlord overall, okay? But good news, they were able to get the tenant out of there and, you know, the tenant now hopefully is homeless. I mean, honestly, I I, I don't usually wish bad things upon people, especially people with kids. This lady got a kid, right? I feel bad for the kid because, you know, the example that your mom is giving you is horrible, okay? It's basically steal, cheat, okay? And take what doesn't belong to you and you know just use people and abuse them that is not the kind of lesson that you teach your children now i feel bad for this lady's kid anyway yeah good news for landlords up in new york city it is possible to get tenants out of there but you know this is a one-off case okay it's still very difficult for most landlords to go through the eviction process and it probably helped that this landlord had started it before the pandemic began